on behalf of the congressman of our city and our district, Congressman Bill Pascro, who is always reaching out to us and always defending our firefighters, our police officers, and our community. We thank you for those beautiful words, giving us perspective of the day. As Reverend Sally began her prayer, this beautiful and inspiring prayer, she spoke about unity. Unity, it is in, in the very title of our nation, the United States of America, it is what is to drive us. Assemblyman Scheer had pointed out that though there are differences amongst us appropriately that we talk about and highlight those presentations and uh, introductions to the hyphenated titles. We are uh, this American, that American, this American, but we are all together in this nation, united. But that is the goal. It was, I believe, uh, Senator John Kerry who had mentioned right after 9-11 that it was the worst day that we had seen in our lifetime, which brought out the very best of us all. I considered what that means, brought out the best of us all. Because when you think of the numbers, it was 19 terrorists who took the lives of 2,977 and many more after. And on that day, 25,000 individuals were injured. It wasn't just those who lost their lives. There were thousands who went to the hospital. And I recall seeing footage of store owners opening up their doors, trying to rescue individuals running away from the site. I recall hearing individuals share words of inspiration and support for brief moments in our history as Assemblyman Chair had pointed out, when we were defending democracy, we forgot about those differences. We were just a collective United Nation that had been attacked. And our spirits were low as we mourned the losses of those that many of us never met. It was, I believe, the author, New Jersey author, David Levithan, who said, what separates us from the other creatures of creation is our ability to mourn for those that we do not know. Many of us heard the names and we heard the stories and we experienced the uh, accounts of individuals going, I can't find my father, I don't know where my mother is, I have not heard from my sibling, where is my son? And we empathize from far away. We empathize as we watch the images on the screen and we began to get emotional and we teared up because we could understand what it would be like to wonder, it's my family member coming home. This senseless act, this evil and malicious act, this assault on our country. I sometimes ask myself, why do we do these ceremonies every year? And as I heard the beautiful Star Spangled Banner the national anthem being sung, I had considered those words. Oh, say you, does that star-spangled banner yet wave? Does it yet wave? The Secretary of State at the time, Colin Powell, has stated you can be sure that America will prevail. The spirit of resiliency will continue. And as I stand here today as your mayor and look up at our flag, I look at the men and women in uniform. I see those community members and veterans and representatives and officials and clergy standing here today, resoundingly saying, yes, it still waves. Yes, we are here. I look back to history and respond to our Secretary of State at the time and say, yes, we prevailed. Yes, we prevailed. But what should we do? I don't think I could have articulated it better than our assemblyman to preserve democracy, this most sacred system that we honor, not just in this ceremony, but every single day. This amazing nation that opens up its arms to all people of every color, of every background, of every belief, as our children right now enjoy a free education as we highlight the efforts of teachers and those who serve on the front line, those who still defend our nation abroad, those who are in hospitals serving, we are reminded that it is every day that we are to honor those lives that were lost, those that were injured. It is every day that we are reminded 
that we may be shaken but never destroyed that we prevail we rise up not of our own strength but as a, a result of our collective will our commitment to that vision and an understanding that it is by God's grace it is by his protection by providential guidance that we continue forward united and together and how are we to do this former president of the United States of America Barack Obama once said in the smallest act of kindness in the simplest gestures where we support one another this is how we honor the lives of those who were lost this is how we honor the spirit of unity to remain united is our goal it is how we respond to hatred not with hatred but with love it is how we respond to those acts of cowardice to take away lives by cherishing the lives of those who are most vulnerable among us of helping our children and instilling in them those same values that we hold so dear it is by providing services to our homeless it is by helping the widow and the orphan and those who are turned away from or have individuals turn them away our nation again i reiterate opens up its arms this is our response it isn't playing the bagpipes it isn't the national anthem it isn't our pledge of allegiance it isn't all of the formalities and the celebrations that we do throughout the year but it is like president barack obama said in the smallest gestures in that time where we assist one another in those moments where we put our differences aside and embrace what we have in common who we are and remember those words we mourn for each other we empathize for each other but it is in how we care for each other that we express the beauty of our true humanity it is wonderful to see the leaders of faith that are with us father george father roland uh, Reverend Irwin, Reverend Sally, but I can tell you as I have met with them often, it is not words that honor your faith or your belief. It is not words that honor whatever stance you take, whether it is that one of a religious or non-religious one. It is our acts and our gestures and our support and how we treat each other when the cameras are off, when there are no pictures, where there are no crowds, that is what makes us so amazing and so great. We have accomplished so much as a nation. We can boast of so much, but I believe that the greatest accomplishment of our most amazing and wonderful and great nation is how we have received individuals from all over the world, how we have come together to make it a great place. So today, we honor those lives the 2,977 that died on that day, the over 25,000 that were injured, the countless that were affected, those who died after, the millions that each day consider what occurred. We honor their memories, and we don't forget that it is important to be vigilant, to remember that there are those around the world that hate us, those around the world that would want to attack us, and that is why we pray for our military. We pray for those who serve in uniform around the world. So I say this to every single one of you. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for continuing each year to remember not just 9-11, but to remember our nation and to continue to share that spirit because it is infectious. As I consider our youth, and I'll conclude here, we are well aware that there are adults who weren't born when this occurred. And that's why it's important. Because in reminding them, we remind ourselves and we continue to lift our nation up. Thank you and God bless you.